Okay, now, I told you about the graphical method being, becomes very, becoming very cumbersome. Um, once you start to try to add three, four, five vectors, and so on and so forth. And it also, it is also limited in the sense that it only gives you the magnitude of the resultant and not the direction. So, in order to solve that problem, we have a, a second method that actually gives you not only the magnitude of the vector, but it also gives you the resultant, the, the, the direction of the resultant of the vector. And this method is called the component method. Another name for it is the algebraic method. And what this method entails is first taking a vector and breaking that vector down into its components. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now here's an example. Let's say we have a vector, vector V, right there. Okay? What are the components of this vector? What I need to do to find the components of this vector, I need to put it in a coordinate system. And as you can see here, it's already in a coordinate system. It's in an X, XY, X, X, Y coordinate system. And it points in the direction 30 degrees relative to the X axis, or 30 degrees relative to the east. So over here, if you look at this diagram, you will see that these two vectors, V subscript X and V subscript Y, represents the components of vector V. So what we need to do is to be able to calculate those components. How do we do that? Well, here's vector V. In order for us to calculate the components, we are going to have to use our trigonometric functions. And these are uh, what trigonometric functions look like for this particular diagram. Sine of theta, by definition, is opposite, which is dy over the hypotenuse, which is v. Cosine is dx over v, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is dy over dx. And then, of course, we're also going to need to, to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so uh, let's see what we're doing here. The components are effectively one dimensional. My goodness. Okay, so let's say we want to add these two vectors, V1 and V2. Okay, what we need to do is find the components of V1, they're right here, V1x and V1y. Are you following me so far? And here, we need to have the components of V2, which is V2X and V2Y, okay? And um, that will, once we find the components of these two vectors, then here is the resultant, which is the sum of V1 plus V2. This resultant will have its own components right here, Vx and Vy, but it turns out that Vx is actually, oh goodness, what did I do? It turns out that Vx is actually going to be the sum of V1x, right here, all of this, plus V2x. Do you see that? You see that? And Vy is going to be the sum of V1y, plus V2Y. Once again, I know it's a little, it seems a little bit confusing, but I will show you an example in a few minutes so you can get a better grasp of what's really going on here. Okay? So, here is a summary of how you actually add vectors using the, graph, the, uh, the component method. We're going to draw a diagram. Add the vectors graphically. Choose x and y axes. Resolve each vector into x and y components. Calculate each component using sines and cosines. Add the co components in each direction. Find the length and the direction of the vector. Use this to find the, uh, the magnitude and this to find the direction. Okay?